Am I the antagonist for not caring what my husband disabled cousin wants? I am a 27-year-old female and my husband is also 27 years old. We have a 6-month-old baby boy. My husband's two brothers also have children, who are 3, 3, and 1-year-old. Additionally, my husband's aunt has a 25-year-old son named Jimmy, who is physically and mentally disabled, functioning at the level of a 5-year-old child. Jimmy has difficulties with walking and holding objects properly. I have a deep affection for Jimmy and I try everything possible to make him happy. However, since having my own baby, I find it challenging to prioritize Jimmy's needs when they interfere with what my baby requires. For example, Jimmy often wants to play with his ball or engage in card games where he may not fully comprehend the rules, and everyone simply throws cards until the game ends. The problem arises when I am busy feeding my baby, holding him while he sleeps, or tending to any other task that leaves me with no free hands to play with Jimmy. I believe Jimmy does have some understanding of this limitation, but he persists in asking me to play until my husband instructs him to leave me alone. However, Jimmy's mother becomes upset and yells at us, insisting that we should prioritize Jimmy's desires. Nevertheless, it's simply not within my capacity to do so, especially considering that other family members with children face similar challenges. According to Jimmy's mother, we are all being mean and have no right to visit her house if we are only bringing negative energy and making her baby sad. None of us intends to make Jimmy sad, and I genuinely believe, due to my eight-year acquaintance with him, that Jimmy comprehends clear communication. However, his mother desires for him to have everything he wants, and thus insists that we comply, leading to Jimmy's confusion. He knows that if his mother is present, he will receive everything he desires, though this does not occur when we are alone with him as he accepts our explanations after being told three times that we cannot play. The breaking point was during our vacation at Jimmy's family's beach house, which has a pool. While we were all present, Jimmy fell ill due to his weaker immune system compared to ours. The four children and we adults wanted to go swimming to escape the 100-degree heat outside. However, Jimmy's mother insisted that we cannot swim because it would be unfair to Jimmy. She wanted us to stay indoors and play games with Jimmy. How could we explain to four children that they couldn't swim because Jimmy was sick? We understood her concern, but the kids were eager to swim. We suggested going to the beach instead, but then she insisted that we take Jimmy along, despite the fact that he couldn't enter the water. It made no sense to us since we already had our hands full with four kids and couldn't devote additional time to taking care of Jimmy, especially while swimming, which carries its own risks. No one in the group had the courage to speak up, so my husband and I explained the reasons why it wasn't feasible to bring Jimmy with us. This caused Jimmy's mother to have an outburst, accusing us of bullying her son and treating him unfairly due to his disability. I responded by saying that equality was unattainable in this situation because of Jimmy's disability. I also proposed the idea of misleading him by suggesting we were going somewhere less enjoyable so that he would voluntarily choose to stay home and watch TV. However, she criticized me for being a bad person for lying to Jimmy and excluding him. Eventually, she kicked us out of the house. So am I the asshole in this situation? It is understandable that with a new baby, you have less time and resources to devote to playing with Jimmy. It is also reasonable that you wanted to take advantage of the hot weather and go swimming with your kids. Communicating your reasons for not being able to take Jimmy with you and suggesting an alternative plan does not make you a bad person. It seems that Jimmy's mom may have difficulty accepting the limitations and challenges that come with Jimmy's disability and is perhaps expecting unrealistic accommodations from others. While it is important to be compassionate and inclusive towards Jimmy, it is also necessary to prioritize the needs and safety of your own children. However, it may be worth having a calm and respectful conversation with Jimmy's mom to address the issue and find a compromise that works for everyone involved. Am I the antagonist for not doing chores after my wife goes to bed? My wife and I have been married for 10 years and have two kids. We both work full-time and our kids are in school during the day. We've developed a system for childcare and chores that works for us in terms of splitting duties. Neither of us has set chores. We alternate bedtime routine almost every night and the person not doing bedtime will do other household tasks like dishes, laundry, and cleaning. This system helps us stay on top of things without one person feeling overwhelmed. A few months ago, my wife took on a new role at her job. It came with a small pay increase, but also increased her workload and stress levels. As a result, she has less energy at the end of the day. If I'm the one doing bedtime, she goes straight to bed instead of doing household chores. If she's the one doing bedtime, she goes to bed immediately after the kids fall asleep. In the beginning, I was okay with doing all the evening chores because I understood that she was tired from her new role and needed time to adjust. However, as her early bedtime routine continued, I started to feel frustrated. We talked about it and she apologized for not keeping up with the evening chores, but she made excuses about being tired from her job and not having enough energy. I expressed that I am also tired at the end of the day and it's not fair for her to go to bed early every night while I handle all the chores. She said she would try to do better, but nothing changed and I grew tired of doing all the dishes, laundry, and cleaning every night. 
It also affected our quality time together, which has been non-existent since her new job. A couple of weeks ago, we had another conversation about it, and I told her that if she continues to go to bed early every night, I won't continue doing all the evening chores on nights when I also do the bedtime routine. If she does bedtime, I will handle all the chores, but I won't do them every night anymore. She promised to do better. However, she didn't follow through. She kept going to bed early every night, which meant that if I didn't do the evening chores, they would pile up, and I would end up having to do multiple days worth. So I stopped doing them too. By the weekend, the kids didn't have clean clothes, there were dishes piled up, and the house was messy. My wife stepped on a toy that had been left out and got angry about the state of the house. She scolded me for not doing the chores the night before since she had done bedtime. I reminded her that she hadn't been doing her share of the chores for weeks, and she got mad at me. She told me that she's still adjusting to her new workload, and that I need to pick up some slack in the meantime. She thinks I'm being unsympathetic to her new job and its stress. Was I in the wrong here? Initially, you were understanding and willing to take on the additional chores when your wife started her new role and had a heavier workload. However, it is clear that her lack of energy and early bedtime has now become a long-term issue, and the burden of household chores has unfairly shifted entirely to you. You communicated your frustration to your wife and she acknowledged it and promised to do better. However, she failed to follow through on her commitment, leaving you in a difficult situation. It is important for both partners in a relationship to be understanding and supportive, especially during times of transition or increased stress. However, this should not be an excuse for one partner to consistently neglect their share of responsibilities and expect the other to pick up the slack indefinitely. It would be beneficial for you both to have a calm and respectful conversation about finding a more balanced solution that takes into account her new job demands while also ensuring a fair division of household chores. Communication and compromise are key in maintaining a healthy relationship and an equitable distribution of responsibilities. Am I the antagonist for not sharing my inheritance with my half-brother? So my dad passed away last year. The inheritance legally has passed to myself and my younger sister. We also have an older half-brother, same mum. My mom thinks it would be fair to split the inheritance three ways and thinks I'm selfish for not doing so. My dad was only in his 60s when he passed and hadn't made any arrangements or left a will, etc. The only expression of his wishes I have is he named me as sole beneficiary to his pension. The only reason I think he left my younger sister off this is because it was 10 years ago that he made the declaration and she would only have been 11. My parents' divorce was very messy and I don't think he wanted to leave a chance that my mom would get access to the money, but he didn't name my half-brother as one of the beneficiaries, which he could have done if he wanted to. Since my parents' divorce, which was 20 years ago, my brother and my dad have had no relationship. It's been a pretty traumatic year to be honest, from unexpectedly finding his body to having to sort out the funeral arrangements, clearing out his house, and dealing with his estate single-handedly. This inheritance would provide my sister and me with some security and a step up to getting mortgages, etc. My brother has never really acted like a brother with us. He's quite selfish to be honest. He's rarely around, has never helped me with anything, given me a birthday card, a Christmas present, etc. He's also terrible with money and lives paycheck to paycheck, spending it on gambling and at the pub. I would feel really resentful to voluntarily give some of my inheritance away to have it wasted like this. My mom has said if we don't split it evenly, she will balance things out by leaving him more in her will. I said that's totally up to her, her money to do as she wishes with. Then again, I know it will be me who will be left to sort all of the admin out as I'm always expected to sort everything out because I'm the sensible one. I've tried to give the relevant background I can, but I will update the post if you think anything else would be useful to know. Basically, I'm a chronic people pleaser and I do, to some extent, get my mom's point that it isn't fair. But after the year I've had, I feel like putting myself first for a change. So what do you think? Am I the antagonist? You are not obligated to split the inheritance three ways in this situation. Your dad did not name your brother as a beneficiary for a reason, and it seems that your relationship with your brother is strained and distant. It is understandable that you want to prioritize your own financial security and use the inheritance to improve your life. Additionally, your brother's financial irresponsibility and lack of involvement in your lives further justify your decision. It is your inheritance, and you should be able to use it in a way that aligns with your needs and goals. As for your mother's threat to leave your brother more in her own will, that is her prerogative. You have made it clear that it is her own money to do with as she wishes, and it is not your responsibility to sort out the administrative aspects if she follows through on her threat. Overall, it is important to prioritize your well-being and handle the inheritance in a way that makes sense for you. Am I the antagonist for telling my mom she can't go on vacation every time she's sick of having responsibilities? I, female 18 years old, and my sister, female 16 years old, have been arguing with our mom for days because she's checking herself into a mental hospital for the second time since last year. My mom hasn't been going to work in over three years due to social anxiety and some physical problems resulting from her being overweight. My sister rarely attends school, frequently smokes weed, and sleeps all day. 
Meanwhile, I go to school every day and work a part-time job. Every day when I come home, the house is extremely messy, not just cluttered. The dishes pile up for weeks, and we even have rats running around. This information is relevant for the rest of the story. While my mom is still able to function, laugh often, and go out with friends, she neglects her responsibilities at home. She prepares food for herself, but not for her children, and we never eat together. Each person cooks for themselves at different times of the day. My sister and I clean our own dishes after eating, so we don't have a backlog of dishes. This isn't a problem for me. The problem arises when every time I make an effort to clean the house, it quickly becomes filthy again within three days. Because of this, I've given up and only focus on keeping my own room clean. Recently, my mom has been going out very late, lying on the couch watching TV every day, and smoking, causing the house to become worse than ever. We now have a rat infestation and the whole house has a foul smell. Additionally, all the dishes have grown mold. I have exams, so I've been spending all my free time in my room and haven't paid much attention to the other things happening in the house. My mom went to the doctor to get a prescription for her migraine pills and kept mentioning the idea of being admitted to a mental hospital to get a break. She did this last year as well, leaving my sister and me with a three-week-old pile of dishes to clean, all while we were alone at home. We took the opportunity to clean the entire house, but when she returned three weeks later, everything became filthy again. I'm seeing a repeat of last year, and I can't bear the thought of cleaning up after her messes once again, only for it to become filthy within weeks. I talked to her about this, and she responded by saying, I can't manage my household. I pointed out that she can't simply take a vacation whenever she doesn't feel like fulfilling her responsibilities. Her response was that the mental hospital helped her last year until she came back home. I realized that I might come off as the bad guy in this situation, and I empathize with my mom and acknowledge that it must be difficult for her to handle all these responsibilities. However, I don't think it's fair to leave your children to clean up the messes we didn't create. I'm starting to feel resentful towards my mother, and I really don't want that. Therefore, I would appreciate an outsider's perspective. It's understandable that you're feeling frustrated and resentful in this situation. It's unfair for your mother to continually leave the house in a state of filth and expect you and your sister to clean up after her. While it's important to be understanding of her struggles with mental health, it's also important for her to take responsibility for her actions and the impact they have on her children. It might be worth discussing with her the possibility of finding a long-term solution, such as therapy or counseling, to help her manage her household and mental health more effectively. It's important to set boundaries and communicate your feelings to avoid building up further resentment.